In the 1960s, the Soviet Union developed something that seemed to defy the laws of physics. A machine that can jump over bridges, evade sea mines and radar and could move at aircraft-like speeds. This is the Ekranoplan, a machine that uses the ground effect to seamlessly glide over the water. The concept of Ekranoplans all started when Rostislav Alexeyev had a vision that could replace and exceed the limitations of the hydrofoils, which can lift themselves out of the water by having wings attached underneath the hull. But it is still detectable by sonar and a phenomenon called cavitation put limitations on what speed they could achieve. It was a problem that they couldn't solve, so work began on exploring the idea of creating vehicles that could take advantage of the ground effect. The ground effect is a fascinating phenomenon that occurs when an aircraft is flying very close to the surface. This compresses the air between the wings and the surface, creating additional lift and reducing drag making it more efficient than regular aircraft. In just a few years, Alexeyev's work led to the development of small-scale experimental prototypes weighing just a few tons, to this giant 260-ton machine that was unlike the world has ever seen. And being bigger than anything ever built, the Caspian Sea Monster, officially known as the KM, was the biggest Ekranoplan build to this date, and the biggest flying thing at the time. Being 92 by 37 meters, and capable of speeds of over 500 kilometers an hour, it was a true monster of the sea, and with its 22 meter high tail, the KM kept itself in the ground effect and provided control at higher speeds. But with building this gigantic monster, a few big problems started to show. The KM required a lot of maintenance. By having its 10 jet engines constantly close to the water, it risked damage by salt water and other objects. It was also very difficult and exhausting for the pilots to operate and fly safely in the ground effect. It also wasn't very manoeuvrable and required enormous distances to turn. Another problem was the ocean itself. It was promised that the KM could operate in waves up to one and a half meters, but the open ocean rarely has such waves. This meant that it could only operate in small inland seas and when conditions were calm. Maybe in time the engineers could have solved all the issues. But by that time, the Soviet Union had a new leader. Leonid Brezhnev saw the Ekranoplan as a gamble and leaned more towards regular boats instead. Now stuck with less funding, Alexeyev needed to scale down his prototypes and started by making a smaller troop and cargo transport that was able to easily get onto beaches unlike regular boats. In the 1980s, there was also an attack and transport version based on the KM. It was a bit smaller and could carry six anti-ship missiles that had a range of about 100 kilometers. This was the only ground effect vehicle ever operationally deployed. But for Alexeyev, it was too late. Passing away in 1980, he would never see his dream realized. After his death, the funding decreased even more, and after the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991, the remaining Ekranoplans were quickly pulled from service, putting an end to the Ekranoplan program. With the Kranoplans now in the history of the Soviet Union, the dream of the gigantic concepts will probably never become reality. Like the massive aircraft carrier that uses its sheer weight to float above the water, and enormous Ekranoplans that can travel over the open ocean and transport massive amounts of cargo and passengers far more efficiently than any aircraft build before. But the amount of funding and resources that is needed for development of such huge Ekranoplans is nowhere to be found. And that means that for now the Akranoplans will probably stay in the history of the Soviet Union.